So Chris, I want to start with you because you for almost two decades were an NYPD cop. And before we get into what you're doing now, well, I guess, you know what, let's, let's merge the two together. I'm actually curious as a cop on the streets dealing with what you dealt with, did you encounter moments or experiences where you thought this is actually evil? It's not just free will, it's evil. You know, back, back in the day when I was running the streets in the midnights, um, you know, it, it's funny because I, I wasn't, my mind wasn't really focused the way it is today. So on, on handling these kind of cases, you're caught up in, in the job, you're caught up, you know, uh, with the evil. Um, but, uh, to be honest, it wasn't until I, I pretty much focused full time into this, um, this area which we'll call demonology uh, through the church, where I started to try to differentiate differentiate between the primary evil that I was seeing on the street, uh, uh, the second, excuse me, the secondary evil that I was seeing on the street in human beings. And then what's behind that? There, there must be a primary evil. So then I started to take my biblically based, uh, you know, um, understanding and apply it to that. Okay. So until... That's helpful to, to know. Yeah, and it's true. I mean, look, I didn't start looking at these issues, and I've been a Christian my whole life until a couple of years ago. I feel like I kind of, Ephesians 6, I sort of looked past this battle between good and evil that's going on, and I just kind of didn't really think much about it. And yet, so much of what goes on in the world, obviously, and around us, there's a lot of evil, and there's a lot happening there. Um, but Harmony, let me go to you on this, because I'm actually really curious you know, what you guys do now is you go in and you deal with these cases of evil. People come to you or you hear about cases where they're experiencing things they can't explain in their homes. And before we get into that work, where did this start from? I know there was a ministry, I believe, that you were involved in that this sort of was birthed out of. Well, Chris um, and I, we started a homeless ministry. Yes. And what year was that pretty much? 2009. Uh, about, yeah, about 2009. And uh, Chris started actually while well, he was uh, a police officer. He started on his shifts. He started um, talking to homeless people on the street. And uh, it started very small. He worked the midnight shifts and um, he would just talk to them and we would give like toys and we would make sandwiches and, and things like that. And then it just grew where we would go out and preach the gospel and and make sandwiches and just started from there and then i think well maybe you should take oh, over no, no. well you're doing good th i mean that's just how that like ministry started and then i think that's how you ended up maybe in africa and, and then it progressed yeah, yeah it progressed, from there. progressed to that's how we ended up getting yeah our second ministry which is now the demonology. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what's, that's what I'm so yeah. interested about, right? Because yeah. the whole yeah. ministry is amazing. Yeah, jump. how did you make yeah. that jump? Like, how did that happen? Well, yeah. yeah. Well, so like Harmony said, we, we started out, you know, very small. And see, here's the thing. You got to go to the beginning. We were saved together yeah. uh, in 2009 in church. We came to the Lord together and we started everything together, our spiritual life. Um, so right from there, I would say almost instantaneously, God brought us to the streets. It, it was something he just put in us to go out to the homeless, to go out and share the gospel, the good news. Look what happened to us. You want to share it? And so it just grew over the years. It grew where to where it went from that little ministry to Times Square, where I, when I switched the day tours, I would go there myself after work and start a homeless ministry. And I would spend time. I would sit on the cardboard with them, you know, talk with them, share Jesus. And it grew. 2018, I felt a higher calling. And I said to Harmony, you know, you don't expect your husband to say this, but I said, you know, I feel like I, I want to go s somewhere else. I said, I I'm feeling God calling me to Africa. So wow. Harmony is the most supportive wife you can have. She <laughs> Everything that she feels God tells me, she's like, if God's telling you that, I, I can't get in the way. And, you know, I was blessed enough to go and I went by myself. Um, wow. I went to, yeah, I went to a Christian school met some fantastic people that I'm still very good friends with. And so I went there just, you know, with, with the passion to help, to help the hurting, the needy, the young kids over there. Um, it's always been a big thing with our ministry, the children. And that's where everything changed. Um, we were 
going through one of the villages and I was with the CEO, Jason Peters, who is an amazing Christian man. He was the, he was the head, the leader. And we were with a little group. And as we're in the, this village, just like the movies you would see, you know, hundreds of people they're selling, you know, animals. It was, it was amazing. You see a little group, a little circle formed, and there was a man in the middle. And this man was, you know, was like slithering around, making a noise like I've never heard before. And he was, he was actually like trying to eat his arm. And this is the truth. Wow. Now the group thought this man was having a seizure. But also before being a police officer, I was a New York City paramedic with the fire department for six or seven years before that. So I've seen thousands of, of seizures and I knew it wasn't. And something spiritually was going on at that moment. I looked at the man having this, this episode and it was kind of like we locked eyes. And at that moment, I'm telling you, it was that's the first time I felt I came face to face with, with pure evil. I, something was, wow. his eyes were black and it shook me. And after that, it changed everything. Um, when I came back home and I was continuing with the ministry and the homeless, I started to research a lot deeper into what's going on spiritually. And I came across things like uh, Santa Murte, where the cartel, when they bring the drugs over and what they do with them and, and have a witch curse them. And that kind of intrigued me more. And I said, wow. I'm involved in now I'm really, you know, I'm in this tangible battle. I felt like, you know, when we're in church, you know, you kind of, and over the years, you would just, you would hear the devil mentioned in the sermon, or you would just, you know, when you're having difficulties in your marriage, it's the devil trying to break that up. And now I'm seeing it kind of like I was working as a police officer and it just went deeper from there. And that's where I began my journey into studying in the field. Harmony, what was your reaction when he came back from Africa and started kind of diving into all of that sort of understanding evil more in depth? Um, well, I knew evil was real. I mean, you, you just by if you just look around at the world and, and you have to believe the devil's real if you believe God is, you know, and we were always, you know, very, very deep in the Bible and always, you know preaching the gospel and everything like that. But I, I have to admit, originally, I was scared to get into this. Yes. But Chris is a deep thinker. And before he jumps into anything, he will study. And he will go from book to book and, and learn everything about it before he just jumps in. So I knew for him to take this seriously, he's going to learn everything about it. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I wasn't, you know, worried. And, and Harmony, what is your, what is your spiritual background? I'm curious. You guys said that you became Christians, you became believers. Um, I think you said 2009 around yes. then. Well, I what, was Catholic you know, originally, and then we were, you know, saved together. And then um, we were uh, baptized in a Pentecostal church. And now we are in a, um, a Catholic church together. That's, that's another story. Yeah, that's, a, that's another story. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that, and that, and I'm curious about that too, because it is interesting, right? The, when we talk about evil and one of the things when I was writing, playing with fire, you know, my book on this topic that it's so hard to dive in and out of the different realms in the Christian realm, because people have different views on all of this, different ways of handling it. And even middle range approaches where there are some Protestants who will say they've seen some of the Catholic things work well and some Catholics saying that the Protestant stuff doesn't work. Right. So, and when I say stuff, I mean the way that you actually would handle these issues. So would you both consider yourself Catholics now then? Yes. Yes. I would say yes. 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 At this point. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So um, Chris, this is interesting to me. So you, you start diving into this. At what point do you realize this is actually going to be bigger than, I don't want to use the word hobby because that's not the right word, but then a side project. This is actually going to be something that you're going to do full time. Well, you just opened up a big question. <laughs> so here it is. Well, what happened is, is that, so I'm studying and I'm learning and I'm learning. And I, I decided to take a little break from it because I, I like to have a healthy balance. Uh, it was never something that was uh, entertaining to me. We don't enjoy, we never did enjoy going to haunted locations, talking with spirits. That's not our thing. We liked paranormal movies and haunt, you know, and and scary movies, but, you know, health with a healthy balance. Well, 
so I took a little break and a few months later we went on a family vacation um to a, to a beautiful resort in Florida for our daughter we took a, her sweet 16 with some friends and long story short this this beautiful place was about three nights of terror of, of a haunted room and the girls were being terrorized in there by by a, a demonic spirit now I mean, you, you can't write a better story, and, and it's a real story because we're going looking for a fun vacation, and the things that happened over that time, um, I, I, I mean, it, it would it would scare the pants out of you, and, it, and these these girls were, were were terrified, and it's almost like you know when you're looking back hindsight, how God prepared me for that moment, being a paramedic, being a police officer in the, in the toughest areas I would say in the country, and doing all that studying, right? Because what I saw in Africa, well, I ended up doing my first minor exorcism of a room in that Florida hotel. I was never in a million years thinking of anything like that was going to happen. And I was like, I say, put face to face, you know, are you going to step through this door and, and do, do it? Or are you going to now just, you know, rationalize it away and run? So I ended up doing it. And again, it's a, these are very long stories of things that happened afterwards as well. But that is, I would say, the push when I came back home and we dealt with what happened in Florida, where I, I said to Harmony, you know what? I feel like I'm equipped and, you know, this is something God's calling me to do to go, you know, and let's see. Let's see. Let's see if God's going to bring people to me to help. And we took it from there. And so you launched the Office of Demonic Investigations, you launched a nonprofit, and you took it from there. I mean, you've been dealing with this and diving into it. Um, what, when you, when you look at all you have done in this process and where you, where God has sort of taken you on this journey, um, you know, Harmony, what surprises you the most about that journey? What surprises me the most that he's getting two or three calls a day from all over the country and um unfortunately there's just not enough time for us to get to everybody um so i i need to retire too but i can't yet <laughs> soon <laughs> soon hopefully so we can we can get to everyone um but that that surprises me the most that you know unfortunately there's demonic activity all over and um and that's what's that's what's so scary that the world is you know so so evil yeah and and you know there's a lot of people denying this right now culture is moving in a direction of everything is material the way i feel is the way i feel and i'm going to follow my feelings and that's all that matters and you know so you have this cultural paradigm but yet at the same time, culture, and I talk about this all the time, is super fascinated by these topics, right? They want to watch the ghost hunter shows. They want to watch demonic movies. They, you know, want the Ouija board. Ouija boards are selling like crazy, right? Tarot cards, all the things that would open doors to these issues are the things that people are intrigued by. Um, and so, you know, Chris, when when you go into a place, because there's so many, there's so many things I want to ask you. I have 15 questions in my head that I want to ask you at the same time. But you know, when you go into a place, when we talk about these issues in the in the Christian church, and I'm using that very broadly, exorcism is a very Catholic term. Some Protestants would reject it. Some Protestants would embrace it. Deliverance is a very Pentecostal term, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and so I'm generalizing there, but. What is it that you do when you go into a situation when a person or a place is experiencing these things? Well, first thing I do is I don't run right in. I take it very slow. And I guess like I was saying, it's the training that I, the worldly training I had in my professions that help, you know, bring together my, my Christian beliefs through scripture. So for example, you know, somebody will call and say, uh, a, B, and C is happening in my home. This is happening to my child. Well, what I'll do is I'll, I have a form. I have them fill out a form. I want to know the medical background, how long this has been going on. It's a very detailed form. I want to see what's going on. Then I'll do an interview, two hours, three hours on the phone. I want to do my own questions. I want to really dive deep into this. And kind of like you were saying, I want to see what that invitation was. Because there's always an invitation. It doesn't just happen. It can be from somebody else, from you. There's a multitude of ways this happens. 
So I want to know what I'm dealing with. Um, and kind of like what you're saying with the different uh, perspectives of maybe Protestant and Catholic, you know, there's a lot of knowledge you really have to take in. You have to really understand scripture, not just read the scripture, but understand what Jesus was saying and what he was doing, what the apostles were doing before you just run in. Um, because I will say this, you know, it, it was very disheartening a lot that I, that I, when I talk to these people who call me, they go to the church first, whether it's Protestant or Catholic and a, they get turned away a lot or B, they just tell them, well, just tell it to get to get away from you in the name of Jesus. And things fly off the handle once they do that. So there's a very big responsibility, I feel, in, in this field, because like Harmony was saying, what was surprising is the demonic activity, the physical demonic activity that's happening in people's lives. So like I said, I'll do a deep investigation. And then when I understand what I'm dealing with, because even Jesus says there's different rankings of demons when he said only some are casted out this way and that way, right? To make it short. The little boy, the little boy who was possessed, right? Yes. It, was, it was after that when the disciples were having a hard time you right. know, getting getting the demons out, and then he was able yeah. to do it. Yeah, yeah. And then even the sons of Shiva, you know, they tried using Jesus' name. They wanted to play around, right? And what happened with them? The demon turned on them. So what does that tell you? We have to look at the people, the person we're dealing with, their spiritual nature as well, because we know from Jesus as well in Matthew seven, not everybody who who says Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. So that has to do with their spiritual nature. Are they saved or not? So I take all of that into account and I, and I really deeply interview them. So the one thing I do want to add to this, where I think is very important that people, especially Christians don't understand that this is, it's a, it's a teaching ministry as well. Aftercare beforehand, we want to train, we want to bring people to Christ and we want to show them the dangers out there and how to stay away, how to stay in Christ. So we don't just come in, wham, bam, cast it out and leave. It's right from the beginning. This is why this is happening. This is how you're going to stay away from it. And if you don't give your, if you don't follow Christ, we, we can't do much. See, that was going to be, not to, I'm going to interrupt you just because that, sure. it is interesting when you talk about this conversation of going in healing places and healing people, it would seem to me, I mean, a lot of the times when you see this happen, the person, the person who's afflicted, they are the most important person at the core of this, because if they're not following Christ, how are they going to find that healing? So it's interesting that you said that because a lot of people you'll talk to, they'll say, well, I went in, it didn't really matter. And I tried to heal them anyway. What happens if that person isn't going to follow Christ, isn't going to do that? See, well, well here's the thing. Not really gonna... Yeah. Well, well, here's the thing. Yeah. We know from scripture that everything is subject under God, even Satan and the demons. They're, we're all created beings. Now, God didn't cast them to hell. He cast them to earth. Now, why would God do that? He did it for his own glory and, and, and to better us. This is how we grow. This is how we mature. For the unbeliever at times, why is he letting them in? I, I always say to Harmony and, and other people, I, I, we laugh because We've been doing evangelism on the streets for, for, like I said, many years, and it's been very, very hard. I mean, I would come home crying. It, it's very, it's hard. It's a hard ministry. And people look at us, well, how can you do this? And I say, this is the easiest ministry I've ever had evangelizing because they're basically saying, what must I do to be saved? <laughs> because right. they're seeing the devil. They're seeing demons. And they're petrified. They're petrified. petrified yeah. So, you know, uh, most of the people... I, I, we started a group um, on, on Facebook. I have a private group I started. It's called Surviving Satan. And it's for the victims that we've taken out of this to help them grow in the Lord. It's a private group. It's, it's basically a safe group for them. And I take them through the Bible to for aftercare. Because like you're saying, it's very important that the people understand this is the battle between God and the devil. There's only a few players on the chess, the chessboard. God, the devil, and us. It's, it's not a chaotic array of spirits and different demons. It's all from the same, the same story, of, right, of God. So when we look at, when we simplify it, we can really, they really tend to understand what's going on. And let me tell you, people have been giving up their stuff to us, Ouija boards, tarot cards, 
getting rid of them, satanic altars. Mm-hmm. You what do you believe. do with all that? What do you do with that when well, they? Yeah, that that's a whole other story. Uh, and this is through experience and talking with other people in the field. It, it's it's tough, but I store it. You, you really look at what what am I going to do with this? If I throw it away, somebody else may get it. Mm-hmm. And if I destroy it, the energy or demonic energy or entity that's attached to this is gone. So we store it. We have it blessed, and it's locked away. And that's all. You know, that's 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 just a personal decision. Because to me, it's kind of like, you know, keeping the genie in the, in the bottle. Well, and, not letting and it out. to your point, and I know you've encountered this, interviewing people who have gone through this. And I know there are skeptics who might be listening to this and saying, I don't believe any of this. But but they will tell you that when they burn the Ouija board or they did whatever to get rid of it, that their problems intensified after that, right? I mean, that's been a story that I've heard many times. Would that be accurate to the experience you have had as well? Well, well that's perfect. That's uh, with the main case in the, uh, the Daily Mail burn the tarot cards, a Christian, he brought a Christian in and the Christian said, no, we got to get rid of these, burn them. And that's when everything broke loose in the house and things got very, very bad for that man. So yeah, that, uh, and again, it, it's getting to the invitation, the root cause, and then figuring out, you know, how to proceed from there. That really helps, helps the victim a lot of the times. Um, so Harmony, you know, how does this work? Because there are people who are listening to this right now or watching it and they're going to say, oh, they're just trying to make money. The the immediate thing. And I even get this talking about the issue, right? They're just trying to make money. It's like, well, I don't get paid for my podcast. I just do it. Um, because I think this is an important topic. How does it work? If somebody comes to you and they need this help, is there a certain amount of money they have to pay? How does that process work? Well, we don't make any money. So Thanks. (laughs) Thanks. <laughs> I, I was we setting you up there because I knew yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't charge anything. Um, sometimes people do give us donations if we we do uh, go far. Sometimes, like one time we went like almost four hours in New Jersey or something. They right. they they did pay for tolls and gas. They they, they offered it sure. to us. That that was really nice actually because it, it was like a long way. But we we don't charge anything because I mean that's just. I feel like that's just wrong. They're victims. I mean, that's just, I I feel like they're victims of like a a tragedy or, I mean, they're like terrified. They're, they're so stressed out there. You know what I mean? No, it's awful. I I would never do something like that to someone. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, so, I mean, it really is a ministry for you guys. Yes. Do you do, do you guys fundraise too, in addition to that? How do you, how do you oh, keep moving? Oh, not, oh no, not, huh. not, not from this one. We, we do fundraise for Seek and Save, uh, the other At one times. sometimes for, for shipping costs when we, um, like to send things overseas for the, uh, for the children and for the orphanages and things like that, uh, for like the toys and the clothes. Sure. Sure. Uh, yeah. For, for that, but no, not, not for this one. We don't, not really. we don't fundraise. No, there, there has been one or two Christians that I know that have helped us with this. They believe in the ministry Yes. and Absolutely. this is how they wanted to get involved, which I understand they didn't want to directly be involved. So they helped us, uh, with the donation actually take care of us for a couple of months for all the traveling. Yes. So we yes. have a, a very good very friend. Nice. Yeah. So, Chris, when you guys go in and you're you're dealing with it, you and this is what I love about the fact that you were an NYPD officer. You have this training. You know how to investigate, right? You go and you do the investigation. If somebody needs, and there's obviously a huge debate about infestation as well. We've done episodes on a, a place having these issues, which we know that there are lots of accounts of that. Um, but if it's a person who needs to, let's say, have an, an exorcism. They they are possessed. They're dealing with a demonic entity in some way, and you've determined that to be the case. Are you the one that does, you know, the exorcism? Do you find somebody else to do it? I'm curious about that part of the process. I've had a few cases where people uh, claim to be possessed. Um, I generally don't make a practice of it because I really believe that, uh, and this is what brought us back to the Catholic Church. I believe that that is a, a different kind of, of office that needs to take care of something like that. That being said, I believe we did handle two of them. And one of them was out of the, by accident, if you want to say. We didn't realize the man was possessed. And that was actually the, uh, the main case that was in the Daily Mail. That turned out he was possessed, without a doubt. Um, and we did another one where the woman was going. She was leaving for Mexico the next day. We were working with her for a couple of weeks and the church, you know, both sides of the church just really weren't giving her the time of day. What are you going to do at that point? 
you know, so we actually performed a, a formal exorcism. Demon r- revealed itself. It was it was pretty uh, it was, pretty uh, yeah. pretty hairy to say the least. Um, it's not something you want to jump into. There, uh, it's not like Hollywood. Right. Well, and and that's yeah, and that's and that's the thing, right? The frame of reference everybody has is is yeah. The Exorcist or The Exorcism of, of Emily Rose or all these movies, yeah. The Conjuring, right? That that have come out. That's what people know about right. this. When you when you have handled it, do you follow the Catholic right? Do you follow? I'm just curious how you have to follow the Catholic right in order for it to work in your view. No, I follow the Catholic right, but like Harmony said. Well, We've been studying the Bible for years. I, I taught the Bible. I, I could translate the original Koine Greek. I, I love the Bible, and I love I love church history. I t- I take everything into account. I don't just follow one procedure. I know. So we use a Catholic right. It's it's a it's a, a guideline for me, because ultimately I don't think it's a ritual of words. It's your prayer to God. This puts it in a way that they've been doing it for centuries that really makes sense to when you're performing a house exorcism, uh, uh, you know, demonic oppression, praying over somebody for curses, they have it together. Whereas the Protestant church really is just going, casting it out, which comes into account too. Sometimes you got to go that way. I don't stick to one, to one ideal, you know, definitely Catholic has worked for us. And I will say that. So I stay with what works. It's a very formulated. It's it's a it's a very step by step procedure. And in t- in cases, you know, just like with police work, it's training. So you know, we're in an attic in Connecticut, and this demonic spirit starts roaring around the house. Smells coming out of the out of the floor. We can't breathe. We're choking. It's good to have it in front of you. So you, when you're losing that train of thought. Your word, the words are there, and you can feed off the words. You can start praying off the words. So, to go in blindly, I think is is more arrogant than to say being prepared. And I believe a lot in what the Catholic Church does with the incense, with the frankincense. It's biblical, holy water. It's your faith. It's consecrating to God. It's, there's no power in the water. It's you're you're showing these people this is what this is what you're focusing on the kingdom of God. So this is this is my train of thought going in. It's not basing it like I wear a St. Benedict's medal. There's no power in the medal itself. It's, you know, it's, it's really your understanding in the Lord, your faith, faith in the Lord, number one. So to answer that question, I know I'm going around, but I'll take everything into account on each situation. Yeah, no, that, and that's, and I think that's a really interesting approach and it does, and it does sort of jive with you know taking it into account with what Jesus was saying that there are different ways, right? That there are different. It's not all cookie cutter necessarily, and how this is going to be done. Um, as we sort of round out to a close, and I want to have you guys back again to talk more because there's so much we didn't even scratch the surface on. I mean, this is a huge topic. What for both of you? You know, now you're in this, you're doing it, and I'll start with you, Harmony. But but what for both of you is sort of the the hope for this ministry. You know, at the end of the day, when all is said and done in this ministry, you've either turned it over to somebody else or you've completed it. What are you hoping to have left behind? Left behind? Uh, wow. I would love to rid the entire world of demons. <laughs> that would be awesome. And to um, be like superheroes of uh, yeah, you know, right. God's servants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. you know, you're funny. She's that, funny. That would be, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be awesome. That would be a goal, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, my goal is for people. You know, and this is why it's just an extension of seek and save outreach, right? It's to bring people to the Lord. It's really evangelism. So, like, if we look at people who are casting out demons in the New Testament, the reason. They were doing this. The reason Jesus brought this new teaching, they said, it was the first new teaching they all saw, which got the 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 eye of everybody in that area. It's because he was showing them, I'm the Messiah. He was showing them the good news. It was all about bringing the good news. It was miracles. It was signs. It was wonders that the kingdom of God is here. So if I could leave anything behind and or, or my hope for it is that people realize that 
this is opening up their eyes to the the darkness of the world and where they need to go into the light of Christ. And that's what that's what I really hope for this ministry. So one, I lied because I have one more question for you, yeah. Chris. Um, yeah, and this is, it's like not one of those questions you end with because it's a much bigger question, I think, for some people, depending yeah. on how you're, you're going to answer it. But, you know, one of the things people generally assume when weird things are happening is that their house is haunted, that a dead person is there haunting them. Um, and that tends to be a common thing in culture that people believe. Where do you stand on on that? Because a lot of people would say, no, you're dealing with, an evil spirit. There's only two types of spirits and they're not dead people hanging out. What, where, where are you on that? Well, my first, my first answer would be, is I'll be the first to say, we don't know everything. You know, we know what scripture can tell us. And there's a lot we don't know still 99% of the time. I, I believe it's demonic. I tell people it's not your dead relative. Don't speak with them. Once you begin to open up that conversation, you just opened up the law of invitation and given rights to that demon now to come into your life. So don't do it. Good. Yeah, that's a great answer. So it wasn't a long answer. It was pretty, I mean, I think that's t- that tends to be what seems the most biblical that, yeah. you know, we don't have a lot of evidence in the Bible of people hanging out. You know, right. You've got a couple of interesting examples. You can go to, you know, Samuel and you could look at Saul summonsing Samuel with the witch of Endor. But that seems to be a unique circumstance, right, where God is yeah. allowing something to happen for a reason, maybe. So you don't you have the weird example of, you know, after Jesus's crucifixion of people coming out of their tombs and going into right. Jerusalem. But you those are really unique examples. You don't have a lot of hauntings going on in, in the Bible, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and like I said, we don't we don't know everything. And then we we actually run tests. So you got to look at it this way: just like in real life, a human, we have free choice mm-hmm. to choose or reject God. Now, the demonic hate God; they have an aversion to God, an aversion to the church. So, when we're doing certain prayers, and and uh, I'm I'm trying to really figure out what's going on, you'll see the activity spike up when it's demonic, it will kind of reveal itself because of the, they don't want any, anybody from the church, um, you know, around. So that's how you'll know. And that's what happens most of the time. Like, so that's how we know it's pretty much demonic most of the time. Well, listen, Chris in harmony, where can people go if they're interested in your ministry, if they want to know more about what you're doing? We have a Facebook page. It's called New York demonic investigation. We've changed the name. So it's New York demonic investigation. Um, you can reach me there. That's where most people reach me and they message me. Uh, we, also, we also have a phone number for this uh, ministry, 516-778-3324. It's 24 hours. You can call, leave a message, and uh, I'll get back to you. I appreciate your time. Thank you both so much. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much.